hawk girl, a brave soul in flight. Fierce, passionate, and loyal, hawk girl has been a valiant hero to the point of death and beyond. Trapped in a loop of eternal return, her spirit has strived for right, despite the inexorable arc of her fate. To be a creature in bondage for a lifetime is a terrible thing. How much worse to be a slave to fate for eternity. This raptor-winged soul wearing the mantle of the hawk has suffered seemingly endless deaths and rebirths in a multi-millennial struggle to escape. Not until she renounced her own true love did she finally fly free. Life in Hyksos-controlled Egypt was hard, even for a princess. The savage Phoenician conquerors had taken the greatest empire of the ancient world for their own, and in the century that followed, they degenerated into brutal overlords. None were spared the capricious whims of the pharaoh and his sinister high priest hath set. Even his family suffered his vicissitudes. Although high-born, Lady Shyara was appalled by the abuses she saw. Men and women treated as property, bartered or destroyed at will. She dared to rebel by loving Kufumat Qatar, a prince of old Egypt, and a man touched by a terrible fate. At the dawn of humanity, a caveman had become the avatar of a multi-dimensional hawk god, before being killed by the warrior Vandal Savage. For this failure, the avatar was condemned to reincarnate until he destroyed his murderer. As Savage was immortal, this was the cruelest punishment imaginable. This spell went awry when, reborn as Khufu, the caveman fell in love with Shyara. Using a scrap of magic nth metal given to the rebel prince by the Egyptian god Horus, the lovers overthrew the Hyksos, but were cursed at their moment of ultimate triumph by the dying Hathset. This new hex reacted with that of the hawk god, ensnaring the souls of both Shyara and Khufu within the original curse. Forevermore, the heroic lovers would be briefly united, only to face a vengeful Hathset at their moment of greatest happiness. The Hawk God's curse was inescapable. Vandal Savage spent centuries trying to conquer Egypt. His presence there kept all three spirits tied down to the Black Lands. It was during the reign of Ramesses II that the recurring tragedy took a fresh turn. Pharaoh's closest adviser was his cousin, named Khufu, after the fabled liberator who had destroyed the Hyksos. This Khufu was betrothed to a Lady Shyara too, and at the time, a cleric named Hathset held the highest position in the priesthood. This dark drama was about to play out again, with even greater misfortune. The Hall God's influence was intergalactic and transdimensional. It was particularly strong on Thanagar, in the star system Polaris, where for millennia it had vied with the seven gods and seven devils who formed the basis of the planet's religion. Like many advanced beings, it was drawn to the unique ore known as Nth Metal, found only on this ancient world. Also termed Night Metal, the psychoceptive ore was an incredibly potent power source, capable of counteracting the fundamental forces of the universe, especially gravity. Nth Metal caused biological mutations and augmentations, and acted like a psychic battery, capturing and storing memories and emotions. 
determined to regain control of his avatar, the Hawk God influenced Thanagarian officials to dispatch a scout ship to Earth, ostensibly seeking new worlds to dominate. It crashed in Egypt, where it was discovered by Shiara and Khufu as a fallen skyboat of the gods. Fragments of nth metal still active inside it. Court magician Nabu, in actuality an earthbound lord of order, helped Khufu shape the metal into an anti-gravity harness, and soon he and Shiara were soaring through the skies above the desert, airborne warriors defending the nation from all foes. Twice they met the Justice Society of America, when the Flash was lost in time, and again when Vandal Savage's metamorph attacked Egypt. On the latter occasion, Captain Marvel, Mr. Terrific, and Kendra Saunders, Hawk Girl, aided them. Shiara realized, with a sense of foreboding, that she was soldiering beside her own future self. Once the victorious Justice Society returned to its own time, Hathset struck. After Shiara refused his romantic advances, the priest killed her and Khufu with an nth metal blade and made himself pharaoh. This perfidious act weakened the Hawk God's power, severing the Avatar's mystic tether to Vandal Savage and replacing it with a bond to Hathset. Shiara's soul was trapped in the spell too, unwilling to abandon her true beloved and move on to paradise. She became a bird caged by the hatred of two implacable, undying enemies. The Hawk God's curse was transformed and deflected into space, drawing Thanagarian heroes yet unborn into the mix. Hathset's triumph was short-lived, and after his death, all Nth Metal implements were hidden and lost to history. From now on, the reincarnations of the Three Souls were not confined to Egypt. As the centuries passed and the effects of exposure to Nth Metal lessened, the many reincarnations forgot their plight. They were no longer tormented by past life memories of their inevitable fate. With the entire planet now their stage, the cycle of birth, heroism, love and death continued. The next tragic twist in their repeating lives occurred in America, when, reunited as the gunfighters Nighthawk and Kate Cinnamon Mancer, they encountered the thief gentleman Jim Craddock. Although a rogue, his soul was not irredeemable until the night he was interrupted by Cinnamon during a burglary. As they struggled, Nighthawk burst in and executed Craddock, thinking he had assaulted his beloved. Craddock's spirit was now trapped by their curse too. Unable to move on until they did so too, the ghost has remained earthbound, haunting all their successive reincarnations. In 1939, Shiera Sanders had been suffering nightmares of her murder in ancient Egypt. When she stumbled into archaeologist Carter Hall outside a subway station, one look into his eyes convinced her that the dreams were actually memories, and that she had found her lost soulmate. Hall had recently acquired an Egyptian dagger made from crystal and an unknown metal, and the metal, of course. This fresh exposure had released his own reincarnated recollections. So, aware of his true fate, he knew Shiara was waiting for him somewhere. When rogue scientist Anton Haster attacked New York soon after, Carter and Shiara realized that Hathset too had returned, and that their doom was at hand again. Hall created the guise of Hawkman to battle Haster, Soon Giera too donned wings to fight beside him. The mystic energy and psychic turmoil generated by World War II distorted the curse, and they both lived far longer than they expected. Hawkman and Hawk Girl fought evil for over a decade, only retiring when the US government ordered masked heroes to reveal their identities. 
with their doom seemingly forestalled, they married. Chiera had a son, Hector. Their friend, Perry Carter, who had originally helped Carter master nth metal and form it into a harness and wings, revealed himself to be Paran Katar, a Thanagarian spy. He had fallen in love with Naomi Williams, a Cherokee woman he had met while scouting the deserts where America tested atomic weapons. They married, and when Penny was recalled, he brought his wife and newborn son back to Thanagar with him. Once more, the curse and the properties of nth metal would ensnare further victims. Naomi, hating the oppressive hawk world, returned to Earth, leaving her son, Katar Hall, to be raised as an imperial patrician, and eventually a military police officer, a winged man. On Earth, a second age of heroes began with Superman. Soon the skies were filled with new and returning superhumans. The Justice Society reformed to stop Vandal Savage, with Hawkman as their leader. Hungry for action, he also joined, joined the new Justice League of America. Faithful unto death, Shiera joined him, dividing her time between crime-fighting and child-rearing. As the war ended, Adolf Hitler used the mystic Spear of Destiny to launch Gotha Damarung, Twilight of the Germanic Gods, and by extension, the eradication of all life on Earth by the hordes of Hell. This unfolded inexorably over four decades. To save the world, the entire Jahese invaded the realm of the Gods to wage a never-ending battle for humanity's survival. When they vanished, Thanagarian Fel Andar assumed Hawkman's identity to infiltrate the Justice League. The imposture lasted for months, and Andar used alien science to turn his human girlfriend, Sharon Parker, into a substitute Hawk girl. During the crisis on infinite Earths, a multitude of alternate Earths collapsed into one, and the aftershocks in the fabric of space-time caused great instability. On Thanagar, half-breed Katar Hall was branded a criminal and sent to Earth to cover up a diplomatic incident. With him came his winged partner, Shaira Thal. Within weeks, they had enlisted the assistance of the local police commissioner to adopt civilian identities, based on those of their 1940s predecessors. They began battling all the evils Earth could throw at them combining advanced Thanagarian technology with a facility with ancient Earth weapons from every era and land. Their exploits soon brought them to the forefront of the crime-fighting community, and before long, they were fighting beside the world's greatest superheroes. This new Hawkman and Hawkwoman served with honour until the malevolent telepath Count Viper almost destroyed them. Meanwhile, the JSA had escaped the Ragnarok realm and quietly returned to Earth. Ever restless, Carter Hall resumed his heroic persona and brought the wounded Hall to his mother Naomi, who had been in hiding since fleeing Thanagar. Reeling from the revelation of his true origins, Hall fell under the control of the Hawk God. He became its avatar, and dragged the other Hawk heroes into a confrontation, which freed the raptor deity to run wild. It ravaged Thanagar, killing millions, before turning its attentions back to Earth. Amidst the temporal flux of zero hour, the Hawk god possessed Carter Hall, and consumed every avatar it had ever created. As Katar Hall and Shaira Hall battled the god, it absorbed these beings to form one unique, deadly creature. It had gravely miscalculated. Indomitable Carter Hall seized control of the amalgamated monster, and Shaira valiantly joined her willpower with his in one final sacrifice. United in battle as they had always been, the lovers exiled this ultimate hawk god 
beyond all reality. But they were lost with it. Their interminable reincarnations were ended. Or so it seemed. Years passed, and clouds of doom gathered. As the remnants of the Justice Society gathered to bury the Sandman, another comrade fallen in battle, deep in desolate West Texas, a troubled young woman named Kendra Saunders donned the garb of Hawk Girl at the insistence of her grandfather, Speed Saunders. He had been with the Sandman when he died. Speed was a veteran adventurer and American intelligence operative, and the adored cousin and confidant of Shiera Hall, the World War II Hawk Girl. In her nineteen years, Kendra Saunders had endured untold horrors. An inexplicable assault by two renegade policemen on her mother had traumatised Kendra as a child. Leaving her amnesiac and driven by inexplicable cravings for vengeance. Years later, after her parents were murdered, she moved in with her grandfather. But despite his best efforts, she went completely off the rails. She bore and lost a daughter named Mia, and attempted suicide more than once. One night it looked as if she'd succeeded. The doctors believed they had saved Kendra, despite the fact that she had been dead for ten minutes. But when Speed looked into the eyes of the revived girl, they were brown instead of green, and he saw the soul of his beloved, departed cousin Shiera staring back. Although this teenager only possessed fragmented memories, Speed knew Shiara's soul now inhabited her body. Speed trained her for the life he knew she would be drawn towards, and, to Kendra's surprise, she took to it readily. Although she had no memory of Shiera or her previous lives, other than painful flashbacks of other times and places, her body, augmented by the nth metal, instantly accessed the muscle memory needed for flight and the combat experience of the uncounted warrior women she had been. She was drawn into action, inadvertently saving Shaira's reborn son Hector from possession by Chaos Lord Mordu, and found a home with a new Justice Society. Unhappy in her private life, she discovered joyous liberation in combat against a host of foes such as Ultra Humanite, Eclipso, and Cobra, and happily voyaged to different times, planets, and dimensions, despite being terrified of confronting her own origins. She finally learned the truth from Zauriel, an earthbound angel. Kendra had truly died, and the restless spirit of Shaira Saunders had walked in, reanimating her corpse to create an entirely new being. Although Kendra's personality was dominant, the elder Hawk girl was slowly merging with her. Moreover, just as Shiera had returned, so Hawkman too was coming back. In the midst of combat, Hawk girl was kidnapped to Thanagar by rebel priests, the Talon of Truth. She was summoned by the desperate clerics through the power of, and her connection to, the incredible Nth Metal, to battle the demonic Onimar Sin, who had turned the already devastated planet into a vast necropolis. With the JSA, she fulfilled her destiny and rescued Hawkman from realms beyond. But the lover's situation had been forever altered. Although drawn to him, Kendra spurned Carter Hall and rejected their eternal relationship. She needed to control her own destiny. Agreeing to be Hawkman's crime-fighting partner and nothing more, she relocated with him to St. Roch, Louisiana, where they had lived as Nighthawk and Cinnamon 150 years previously, accepting jobs at the Stone Chat Museum. Initially struggling to achieve balance in their lives, they faced an unceasing stream of villains and attacks, to which they gradually adjusted. Hathset was back too. Little did Kendra realise that her new platonic life 
was in part the culmination of an insidious scheme by the remorseless priest. She developed a solid working relationship with police chief Albert Ndahl, unaware that he was the key to all her terrors. Years ago, in Texas, two police officers had attempted to assault Kendra and her mother, but the little girl had grabbed one cop's gun and killed him, scarring the other into fleeing. Hysterical, she blotted out the memory, and her mother covered it up to avoid repercussions. When Kendra was sixteen, her parents were murdered, but even her grandfather's connections could not discover why. Now the ghost of Jim Craddock revealed that Nadal, whom he had been mentally corrupting for years, was the surviving police officer, and had killed her parents at his urging. Obsessed with Kendra and facing discovery, Nadal went on a killing spree, and Hawk Girl finally had to confront her own lust for vengeance when an out-of-control Hawkman tried to kill him. Her personal life in constant turmoil, Hawk Girl always sought comfort in action. When war between Ran and Thanagar erupted, she joined a battalion of heroes in the struggle. When a teleporting Zeta Beam malfunctioned, many of Earth's finest heroes were injured in bizarre and horrible ways. Their atoms hideously scrambled. Kendra absorbed excess stellar mass, sustaining injuries that trapped her in a coma, enlarged to twenty feet tall. By the time she was cured, a year had passed, and Hawkman was gone. Her eternal paramour remained on Thanagar, and freed at last from centuries of baggage, Kendra grew into a strong, independent hero in her own right. Shiera's encroaching memories helped her as curator at the museum, and she defended St. Roch from numerous threats, ranging from elder gods to alien invaders, and even, at one point, giant robots. Eventually, Hawkman returned, and the two resumed their tenuous relationship. But after joining the Justice League of America, Kendra began an affair with Red Arrow. He was an equally haunted soul, but, crucially, was a man who was her choice and not an inherently cursed inevitability. After months of battle in the League, the events of Blackest Night drove her back to Hawkman, and they both perished at the hands of the risen dead. Whether their cursed love has finally been laid to rest, or whether the power of their millennia of passion will once more restore them to life, is a question only destiny can answer.